Don't you know that you're a grown up? No gates, no punts. Not a lot if you're a grown up. Hey, hello, and welcome back to the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. We are on episode three once again, and joining me as always, I have George. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, Mo is here. Hey, everybody. And I am John, of course. And we are recording this on the occasion of Hurricane Irma, about to run its way up the entire body of Florida. And all of us live in North Florida, so Yay. we're recording just Woo-hoo. a little bit early. As we record this, it's uh, not yet made landfall, and uh, we thought, hey, in case we all lose power, maybe we should record this now so that we don't deprive our fourth listener of an opportunity to hear our voice once again. That's true. We can't do that. Yeah, you got you got to look after the fourth listener. You always have to. <laughs> the most important listener ever. <laughs> Better than right. the three of us, that's for sure. <laughs> So before we get into the things we want to talk about today, uh, we actually have some listener email. What? Sure enough, someone wrote in. So the first email, question that said, this is from Mike, by the way. Hi, Mike. How's it going? Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. You have all mentioned you have children. Do you feel there's a generational gap between you and your kids, or do you have some common ground where they're into what you were as a child or have times changed too much for them to be interested or entertained? Let's go to you first, Mo. Actually, my kids, I mean, I pretty much indoctrinated them to all the same stuff I did as a kid. So we played role-playing games, played video games together. Probably if there was a generational gap between us, it would have to be music. You know, mm. the stuff they listen to, uh, they mention stuff. I'm like, who? <laughs> Which made me feel old, but, you yep. know. But pretty much that's about it. For my part, I mean, uh, I only have one child, probably similar to you. I mean, I kind of, you know, if you grow up in a house that is completely just drenched in dorkery, (laughs) it's hard to avoid, you know, understanding that that's kind of the norm. (laughs) So it's kind of like, it's like growing up, you know, and everyone speaks Spanish, you're going to pick up some Spanish. If you grow up in a house where everything is nerdery, well, then you kind of pick up on some of that. And uh, so my daughter has picked up a vast majority of that. And she even listens to some 80s music. So so it's not too, not not too bad. Not too bad. How about you? How about you, George? Well, you know, I have three children. My wife had uh, two boys before we got married and they're twins they're now 25 and then i have uh the youngest one is uh, he's about to turn 15 now wow. so there's a difference not just between myself and my children but just between the two groups of children so to speak because you know they're 10 yeah, years because apart. They're, they're 10 years apart yeah yeah but it, it's been kind of interesting because they uh, the older boys the twins they like a lot of video games they play a ton on Steam. Like every time I log into Steam, I see one of them logging in from where they're at and playing their games and everything. Hmm. They're all playing a different set of games than what I enjoy. They're playing the first person shooter oh, games, Halo. the ones that are so frenetic. Yeah, I can't keep up with I that can't stuff. Either. My thumbs oh, the, are those not hyper geared competitive. For that yeah, kind of I can't stuff. do that. My, yeah, my thumbs are geared for one button at a time, on, <laughs> like on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. <laughs> they're not built for the six button run around, shoot somebody with a sniper rifle uh, type of thing. Yeah, gotcha. You see yeah. a bunch of people hopping around, and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> so we have one more piece of uh, listener email. This is from our other fourth listener. Oh. This is from Hambone. <laughs> our other <laughs> fourth listener. Uh, and so Hambone writes, hi, Hambone. Hey. What is something you have in this generation that you wish you could or would have had when you were growing up as a Gen Xer? Mm. Start with you, George. Mm. Wow. Um... I appreciate the question, and I understand the idea behind it. I don't think there is anything from this generation that I wish I had back then, because the one thing that I had back then that I feel like gets overlooked an awful lot now because of all the different devices and games and movies and TV shows was my imagination. When I would play army men on the, in the yard with my friends or when we would turn on the Atari 2600. My imagination was a main part of that play, of that fun. So I don't think there's anything I would really want because having the things that I did back then gave me the perspective that I have now on the modern geekdom, I guess. All right. Fair enough. You're going to stay purist. I respect that. Yeah. So I gave it some thought. And, um, you know, one of the cool things about being a Gen X grown up for me is that I'm now acquiring the stuff that either I already had or I didn't get to have. So I'm kind of, I'm doing that in reverse. What are some things you had as a kid that you wish you had now? I'm doing that. The, 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 like the one thing that would just make my brain go mushroom cloud back in the 80s, if I had, that I've got today, if I could have then, for me, 
is my emulation arcade cabinet. Oh, so I've got one of those home arcade yeah. cabinets, right, that has every 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 arcade game in it, every Atari game in it, every Nintendo game in it. First, emulation in general was not a thing back yeah. then because PC power just wasn't there. But right. like if you could just if you could just time warp that cabinet and put it in my bedroom when I was like 14, you would never Oh leave. my god. Oh my lord. I yeah. just every time I fired that up, I think about I can't believe all these things are in this one box and just I could have started investing in my retirement fund with all the five dollars every day I put into the arcade. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Having emulation in general or that cabinet for me would have been like the one mind blowing amazing thing if I if I could. I would gift that to my young self if I had a time machine. So what about you, Mo? Yeah, I thought about it too, and so you know, I'm thinking about like what were the most boring times of my childhood, which were the long car trips like really long like 24 30 hour drives jesus oh, yeah. so what i would love to have is like a portable dvd player or blu-ray player because uh, okay that would have made those rides like a lot more bearable and probably would have stopped a lot of fights between me and my brothers <laughs> <laughs> you know because you get bored what are you gonna do yeah let's fight of course let's tease his brother endlessly until he flips you know <laughs> right i spy doesn't hold up for 30 no hours. neither there's 20 no. questions or hangman <laughs> or, or uh, state license plates <laughs> license or... plates no Thanks for writing in. If you want to have your question answered on the podcast, just remember to write us at podcast at genxgrownup.com. We really do monitor that inbox, and we do listen and read those things. So we appreciate it, and let's move along. We'll do fine after this complete breakfast, including my vitamin pack Frosted Flakes. They bring out the tiger in you. So is anybody listening or looking at anything new in TV or movies lately? Well, I saw a new movie that was put on Netflix called Little Evil. Have you guys heard of that one? No. You mentioned that to me the other day, but something about yeah, it's, like Damien Owen kind of it's, thing? It's a comedy. It's a Netflix, one of those original movies that they made. And it's the guy who was in um, Parks and Recreation. The woman he's marrying has like a little kid named Lucas. It turns out that Lucas is actually the Antichrist. Oh, jeez. Like the opening scene. You see the mom running through this rainy this baseball field or something like that, and it's raining really hard, and she sees Lucas out in the field with a shovel. And she's like, where's your stepfather? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's the opening scene. So it's worth taking a look. It's a, it's a fun couple hours, and it's, and it's pretty much available to everybody. Of another show that I've started watching, but I had mentioned that there was a Get Shorty TV show coming out. Oh, oh yeah. right, yeah. But it's, it's about four or five episodes in right now. And it's incredibly good. I loved it. Really? So you Have you seen it, George? No, I, now I got another thing to add you gotta to the list. Add it here. to the list. Listen, put this at the top of the list. I would this say is, so, too. Okay. If you, if you ever saw Get Shorty, John Travolta played the you know kind of suave hitman making his way in Hollywood. That character, it's not a one-for-one -one remake of the movie, no. by the way. It's just inspired by the same book. That character is played by Chris O'Dowd, <laughs> who was from the IT crowd. And you would think that doofy guy is playing this kind of mob dude. He is, and he's very convincing. Yeah. Not quite as stylish as the way Travolta but he's, did. But he's a little more, a little more gritty. Yeah, a little more gritty. But he does a great job. Oh, wow. And they okay. make characters, you kind of, they, like you introduce them and you don't care about them. And then later they'll give you this unexpected flashback of their history. And you're like, wow, all of a sudden they have all this depth and you want to go back and rewatch an episode. And You turned me on to that show. And yeah, I've been watching it too. And it, it is, like you said, I think it's a great show to watch. Have any of you guys heard of Marvel's The Inhumans that's coming out? Yeah. I, I've, I've seen heard, I've I've heard of trailers it. for it. I'm, I'm iffy on it. What, what's your thoughts? I haven't watched it yet because I've read a couple articles in the theater run they took episodes one and two and decided to film them in IMAX and then play them in the IMAX theaters about two weeks before they release it. Oh, that's what? right. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, there's, they're playing well, down wait the Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, it's, it's a TV show, but they're showing the pilot in the theater? Yeah. Exactly. Yep. The first two episodes are in the theater. And they've already shown... Um, it was limited like, run too, wasn't it? It was a limited run. <laughs> so, cash grab. You know. <laughs> cash grab. <laughs> cash grab. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, from what I'm hearing, it might have been a good idea to do a cash grab because it's not getting favorable reviews, which is unfortunate really? because The Inhumans oh. is a great franchise in the comic book world. Yeah. Which you know that's where that's why I was interested in it. From what I understand, they're not really including a lot of the stuff from Agents of Shield either. Really, I thought it was supposed to be like a kind of a spinoff almost. It is, but it's not like you're not going to see a lot of those people in it because it's going to be talking about the Inhumans royal family and the uprising. Oh, okay. The Inhumans okay. actually live, at this point, they live on the moon. Oh, already? Okay, base. so they just already there. Okay, got it. And they escape to Hawaii. 
So, oh. yay, great filming location. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know? That had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Some of the reviews that I've read are talking about how beautiful the shots are for the Hawaii shots and everything, but then when they're interior, everything they said looks like a bad 90s sci-fi TV show. Uh. And the writing apparently is not much better. So it's kind of discouraging me a little bit. I wish I hadn't seen the reviews, but... I guess as soon as uh, some of the stuff starts making the airwaves, we'll be able to judge from there. Yeah. Like I said, I saw the trailer, okay. and the trailer, it looks like they got a great cast. Like, I was like, like all the actors in it I've seen in other stuff, and they've done really good work. I don't know. The trailer didn't grab me. It, it seems like just sort of plastic or, you know, I don't know. It, it didn't didn't seem very good to me. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed that it either gets better or it's better than we think. Yeah, I mean, I, there can't be enough good comic book stuff out there for me, so I'm hoping that it takes off and does well. Yep. So I want to touch on uh, a brand new film that I got to see on the sneak preview opening. This taps right into my Gen X grown-up roots. I went and saw the remake of Stephen King's it. Yep. Oh. Yeah, Mo, he went along he went along with me and uh so It was uh, an 80s It was a made for TV movie. Yeah. Tim Curry. And of course the, the you know the the novel which was, you know, as, as big as your shoe, it's huge. I never read all of it, but I watched the mini series and I knew the story somewhat and I'm a horror fan anyway, going back to you know, Blood <laughs> Beach and the original Friday the 13th and Halloween. So I love horror. This was a, like a Thursday night sneak preview. And uh, they had a 7 o'clock and a 10.15. The 7 o'clock was sold out. Wow. And the 10.15 was pretty full. It was, it was, I think it was pretty much sold out too, I think. So I know what I thought of it. Mo, what did you think of it? I liked it. I mean, you know, I remember the original It and I thought Tim Curry's Pennywise was pretty damn scary. But <laughs> this new one, he's just freaking freaky he is you know uh, he just every time he came on i just got like oh my god this guy's like creeping me out which i guess is what his purpose was it was no it broke some records for like the uh, number one pre-sales for a horror movie and the number one opening for a horror movie or something i think but it was kind of a thriller because the weird thing about it it was definitely more a thriller he's not hiding in the shadows like there he is He's standing right in front of you. Yeah. You could talk to him. You could touch him. I mean, you don't want to, but you could. I mean, he's <laughs> he's not like this this ethereal kind of like wispy thing that's slamming doors, although he does that some. But then once he slams the door, he's just standing there and walking around. Like it's jarring and disarming when you're used to the the spooky thing. And the he's not Michael Myers. No. You know, he, he doesn't just show up to kill you and you didn't see him before that. He stands in front of you and talks to you about how he's going to kill you. Yeah, I'd say one so. thing I really liked about it, though, was that I thought they had some of the best kid actors I have seen since yeah. Stranger Things. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, really good. Cool. One of the kids from Stranger Things was in it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, the guy that played uh, Mike. Oh, cool. Yeah, let me okay. tell you, but all the kid actors were just freaking amazing. They were phenomenal, yeah. And usually, if, like, I love Stranger Things, having that guy that played Mike in it would distract me. He's such a good child actor, it yeah. didn't even distract me. Hmm. It was definitely Sweet. a good movie, though. I would definitely recommend seeing it. Hi there, time for Timer, your roving reporter. I'm talking to you from inside a fantastic factory, your digestive system. So let me tell you guys, I have not bought any cool gadgets, toys, or gizmos in a while. So do you guys have anything huh? like... <laughs> I know, it's, I'm like starting to get like withdrawal symptoms here. <laughs> you need to treat yourself. <laughs> so how about you guys? Though? Um... So I have it on order. It hasn't come in yet. I know John knows a little something about Legos. He's He's been involved in that. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Lego dork, yeah. Yeah. You guys probably have heard of the Lego Mindstorm series. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. That's the like the remote control programmable deals, right? Yeah, exactly. But super expensive. So are you jumping into Mindstorms? Um, yeah. No. We haven't <laughs> until until this podcast makes us internet famous and Oprah rich. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're saying that's not gonna happen. Got yeah, it. not anytime soon. Lego, in their infinite wisdom, has decided to come in with something that's slightly more affordable for the rest of us, but in that same vein, it's called the Lego Boost series okay so this series what is it so it's the same thing it's motors gears programmable sensors that kind of thing it works with a bluetooth app like the kit that i'm uh, getting it's um 800 wait don't tell me you're building a lego drone <laughs> well no <laughs> what drone king <laughs> okay sorry go ahead only because they don't have one out yet if this thing has enough motors i might give it a shot um <laughs> So it's the Lego Boost Creative Toolbox. That's the one that I'm getting. 847 pieces. Okay. So what do you make with it? Anything you want. I mean, the first one, you know, you know, it's going to give you... Drone <laughs> 
<laughs> well, first he's going to make a landing pad for his drones. All right. It's like a Lego creator set. It's not designed to be one thing you can build as a kit. Right. It's a kit. It does have a predetermined uh, robot. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. But you don't have to build that, of course. You can, you know, it's Legos. You can build whatever you want. Right. This one, you get the Lego pieces and the motors and the sensors and all of that stuff for, you know, relatively the same huh. price. So, the you know, you do need some form of Android or iOS phone or tablet. Yeah, who doesn't? Like 90% like, who, who of the doesn't American have population who's going to buy this is going to have imagine. a phone. You know. If you're dropping 150 on Legos, you probably have a phone. <laughs> I guess you unlock the levels of programming in the app. Hmm. That's Lego cool. achievements. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. I, I, I want to hear what you end up doing with that. Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, well, the first thing I got to end up doing is hiding it from my wife when I buy it. <laughs> uh. So I came across something that I wanted to share with you. This amazing little handheld gadget that I 100% don't <laughs> Oh, need, the best kind. And I 110% want one. <laughs> the absolute best kind. <laughs> well, the 10% will put you over the top then. That's, that's right. So they're, uh, they're doing this new retro Atari handheld. And it's, uh, it's like the size of a phone, but it has a physical joystick and buttons, and it's Atari 2600 oh, stuff. Oh, really? Like 50 games preloaded on it. Wait, like an Atari 2600 Game Boy? Yes, exactly right. A color LED, and the clincher, it's wood grain. Oh, oh Lord. That's it. <laughs> he, he already had it on pre-order when he saw the wood grain. <laughs> he didn't even know, he didn't see what it was. He just saw the wood grain and bought it. So listen, the only reason I didn't pre-order it yet is it, it's kind of steep. Well, it's not that bad. It's like uh, it's like 50 bucks, like 50 euro or something. No, they don't make it in the like US 60 yet? 60 bucks or so. Shipping from overseas is another like 30 bucks. So I'm like, ah! Oh, ouch. So you can't get that. you can't get it here? I'm kind of waiting on that. Well, maybe eventually, right? Maybe once it's out, it got me... So interested that I went looking around for... Because, like, right now, in my hand, I could play Atari. I could play it on my sure. phone. I could yeah. emulate it. You know those boxes you could buy in the in, in the store that are called Flashback, and they look like an old Atari, but they have a bunch of the ROMs built oh, in? Oh, yeah, like back in the day, the kinds that had the yellow-red white connections yep, to your yep, TV. Yep. And now they have HDMI ones, but, uh, sure. but, but the, the good deal is they made a Flashback Pocket a few years back, and I found one on eBay. Huh. But the cool thing is it can run... Not just what's built into it, it can run original ROMs on nice. an SD card. So the new product helped you to decide to go buy an old product. I'll still buy the new one. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. <laughs> this is to hold me over so I don't have the compulsion to spend the extra on the one from Europe. And once the one from Europe comes in, I'll get the wood grain one. So this is your appetite suppressant then. You got it. Exactly right. <laughs> the 50 games that come on, do they have a... Uh... Are they popular games, I assume? Yeah, yeah. They're like straight up big time. Yeah, they're the, you know, top of the line kind of Atari stuff. This is a licensed Atari thing, unlike the flashback, which kind of isn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, with Atari doing their Atari box and whatever, you know, I think kind of they're more in, in the mood of doing some more retro stuff to keep themselves in the public eye a little more. But I know, uh, George, you're in pre-production on a, uh, a replays of Yars Revenge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So this handheld that I ordered has unpublished sequel called Yars oh, wow. Return. Look at that. Whoa. Wait, no, okay, so I know about Yars Return a little bit. Yeah. Yep. How did they get the, well, I guess you said they licensed it from Atari. I guess that's how they got the code. That's cool. I don't know. It, it's built into the handheld, though. And how much is this thing running? Because that, you said 60 plus 30 or something? God, I just bought the Legos. I don't know how I can afford <laughs> you can't it. can't hide things from your wife, dude. <laughs> no, I know. He's creative. <laughs> he can make it happen. I'm going to have to PayPal one of you two the money and say it was for something else and then have it <laughs> no, wandered. No, no. It was a gift. <laughs> it was a gift from Mo, baby. <laughs> Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Chuck Norris Super Ninja Reed Smith Kimo and other figures sold separately. New from Kenner. All right, moving on now to games we have been playing. Board games, video games, anything that uh, is of interest to us. Uh, and I want to start with a quick update. I know that last episode we talked about those arcade classics by uh, Basic Fun. Uh, that video is out now. You've probably seen it by now. Yeah, everybody's seen it. I know our, our fourth sure. viewer has watched it, I'm sure. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> he's got to ask some questions You would hope. Uh, I just want to update you that I just had three of those when I did the video. I've since picked up two more. Oh, uh, by far, okay. Qbert was the awesome one of the of the three that I got. You know, Centipede was pretty good. Pac-Man was total shit. 
I got Space Invaders and I got uh, Asteroids now. Oh, and okay. Asteroids. That was right. that was my game. Yeah. Now listen, I'm a little disappointed to say that both of them are LCD oh. games, meaning they're uh, like old calculator games. They're just like the Pac-Man where the images are in a certain spot on the screen. You can just pick which one is lit up, right? right. It's like LCD. Yeah. But Space Invaders, not a problem because it's just kind of a grid of guys moving down the screen anyway. That's fine. Yeah, it's just um, how fast they move. And I'll tell you, the Asteroids is kind of not Asteroid. It, it can't be with the way you're describing it. You can move around in a, in a circle in the middle of the screen. It kind of is an entirely different game, huh. which I wouldn't mind if it didn't say it was Asteroid. Right. Your little ship can kind of move in a, like a, a, there's a circle you can move around and shoot outward. That's all. You can't fly around or, you know. No hyperspace. Yeah. Like, or, call it Meteor yeah. or something. I'll say they're both, again, the artwork is gorgeous. I'm going to take them out of the box and display them because they look really nice in the kind of the cabinet art. But they're both LCD screens. So unless you're just collecting them, Space Evaders is pretty good. Asteroids is not Asteroids, but it's an interesting different game, I would argue. So now I have five of those of the collection so far. So I just want to give cool, a quick man. update on that. All right. So enough of, of, of that. Uh, what about new stuff? Anybody been playing something new? Yeah, I've been uh, playing uh, the new XCOM expansion, War of the Chosen, that came out. Oh, you mentioned that last episode. Yep, that's right. And the uh, and we're going to have a YouTube video on that, too. So it's in editing oh, okay. right now. It is. It's being edited. It's a lot of fun. If you're a fan of the franchise, which I was since back in the 90s when it first started, it's just uh, uh -huh. it's a lot. It's just more of everything you like. Can't complain about that too okay. much. So it's been a blast playing it. All right. No spoiler alert, but basically it's not a huge thumbs down. Nope, not a huge thumbs down. So I've been playing uh, something old and something... George, you inspired me with your Yars Revenge replay. I went back and I replayed... The Atari 2600 Superman. Oh, oh my God, I remember that one. <laughs> the adventure port. Yeah. It's the side-scroller, right? Well, it's a scroller, but it's a multi-screen adventure. Yeah, it's yeah. not just left-right. It's up, down, left-right, down in the mm -hmm. subway. Yep, so uh, that video actually just went live. Uh, it's it's the beginning of our replays series, where we're going to be going back to old games that we played as Gen Xers and uh, replaying them and talking about their history and what we loved about them and and introducing people to them that maybe hadn't seen them before. Yeah, that's nice. And so we're going to have more of those replays as we all look back at our uh, games that we played on uh, consoles and old computers when we were growing up. I really loved going back and playing Superman again. I played it for the replay, and then when I finished the video, I hit reset and I played it like four <laughs> more times. It was, just, it, was, right? it was still fun. <laughs> yep. It was still fun. I'm still doing the same with Yars Revenge now. Once I got that all set up and everything, I'm like, wow, this is just one button click back to my... 10 year old self this is awesome oh absolutely so the elephant in the room one big thing that i know we talked about last time that we were looking forward to the new life is strange prequel mm -hmm. before the storm yay Woo have you played it i have not oh hey hey george you got a big uh, enough okay. list of catch-up stuff okay i just got one game so in the interest of being sensitive to mo and also to everyone else who this is a brand new release and we don't do any spoilers let's talk about it very briefly but spoiler sensitive. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. If you so, haven't already started playing it by now, how lame are you? <laughs> it's almost as lame as somebody who hadn't seen Blade Runner. I, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> okay, everyone, that's been the Gen X Roadup podcast. <laughs> Ow. Anyway. anyway. So, life is strange before the storm. <laughs> Arcadia Bay at its finest. I said before I thought this had a lot to live up to. And... It's just been one episode so far. Right. Uh, the, other, the other ones are pacing out like eight or ten weeks apart, which is going to be painful enough. Really? It's going to be eight more weeks? Good Lord. Yeah, they're, they're, they're milking it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything I first saw about it was like, well, this isn't the same as Life is Strange. They're all like smart changes. Uh, it's not Max Caulfield. You're playing as mm -hmm. Chloe Price. Mm -hmm. And it's three years before the main game, and you don't have that time travel mechanic. I'm like, well, that was Life is Strange. Well, it's not. No. It makes this its own game. The the time travel thing was, it was just a tool. The great thing about Life is Strange was the story itself. Oh, couldn't Let agree. Let me tell you, I mean, part of the reason why I haven't played it yet was that, you know, I enjoyed the first one so much. It's almost like, how could it possibly live up? Like, it's going to pull a Shyamalan here. No, I don't think it did. You know, in my opinion, this is a prequel in the best sense of a prequel. Putting something before, you know, in the past, I always thought was really a difficult thing to shoehorn in because you can't do anything you already know about, but you have to inform about characters. The long and the short of it is this is the right way to do a prequel, in my opinion. You knew that Chloe Price had a relationship with Rachel Amber because she talked mm -hmm. about her constantly and it pissed off Max during Life is Strange. This lets you live through and play 
that story. It's really okay, kind of cool. cool. It's it's inspiring. It almost feels as though they had already written this when they were publishing the first game. So in a way, they just kind of fleshed out something that exists. I mean, Mo, I, I understand why you're waiting for it, and I understand your reasoning. Throw all that in the trash and go buy the game as soon as we finish this recording and go play it. It's right, worth it. I'll do that. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Are you ready? Because once you bite into a Three Musketeers bar, there's no turning back. All right, now we all have stuff that we look forward to. Yeah, one of the things I'm looking forward to, which I guess through the miracle of time travel here, by the time this airs, it actually would have already <laughs> premiered, but it's actually not premiering until tomorrow. It's the uh, the Orville with Seth MacFarlane. Okay. Oh, right. his, uh, his, his uh, Star Comedy Trek kind of... Thing. parody homage and thing yeah it's, like janitors for star yeah, trek i kind of I, I don't know if it's going to be good or bad to be quite honest i have no idea i think it's either going to be extremely funny or it's going to be extremely stupid i don't think there's going to be any middle ground yeah something i read in an article looking forward to it the other day was that uh you know it's kind of like when you've made as much money for fox as seth mcfarlane has you get to live out your being on star trek fantasy <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, I mean, for me, one of the things that I look forward to, besides Walking Dead when it comes to TV premiere season, uh, is Scorpion. And season four is on the way. Some people call it a (laughs) guilty pleasure. I argue there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure. It's your pleasure. You know, it's not smart TV. It's kind of melodramatic. It's very formulaic. Every episode is kind of... Oh, we're going on this thing that'll be very simple. Oh my God, there's a major disaster. But I like the people. You know, I like the characters. They're fun. And you care about them a little bit too. Like I've teared up in a few episodes. I do. And Sly is my man. Sly is (laughs) my man. (laughs) Sylvester, number one. (laughs) Yeah. That's how I feel about the show. Every time I turn on the show, it's a wonderful experience. I am worried about them jumping the the relationship shark though, because we know... For those of us who yeah, watch the show, what yeah. happened at the end of last season, yeah, you know, know, this never goes well in the moonlighting sense of the word when the two <laughs> I know. Sam and you know, tension people get together. You yeah. Know. Well, we'll see how it goes. So, hey, but Mo, you mentioned the Orville before, you know, right. and in the Star Trek vein, between now and when our next episode airs, um, oh, I know what you're going to say. The yeah. long awaited Star Trek Discovery will come out. Yay. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm not, I'm not going to harp on it. Oh, harp, uh, harp. I'm a I, I'm a long-standing, well-credentialed Trekkie. You are. I know that we'll talk about it more once it comes out. I have no worries that it's going to be good. I'm sure it's going to be good. I mean, with the, the manpower and the money and everything put behind it, my main concern for it is, will it be good enough to satisfy the people that are ready to pounce on it to call it bad? When something is this high profile, people are just waiting to knock it yeah. down. I mean, it, in order to do that, it would have to be outstanding. I don't know that anything in this day and age is that outstanding. Yeah, maybe not. But I think this one's going to be a lot closer in time to the original Star Trek, isn't it? Well, and are they going to... Is this going to be based in the reboot universe? No, no, this is in the prime universe. Classic, yeah. I was wondering if they were going to base it in the reboot universe. That would... Because those reboot movies, their technology... Yeah, this is not in the, the Nero, Nero you era, know, schism yeah. timeline movie universe. This is supposed to be in the Prime universe. I'm still I looking forward yeah, to it. Absolutely. I, don't, it's, I mean, know, whether it's... it's I, am too. So, I am too, absolutely. It's hard for them to do bad Star Trek in my eyes. Dude, you're talking about guilty pleasures. I don't know about you guys, but the, the first Kingsman movie... I really fun. enjoyed it. It was okay. Yeah, it was it was a stupid. It was fun. I thought it was over the top. I really enjoyed it. So the sequel is coming out. Looks like they just went even further. So I saw the trailer for it, and I finally they came out with a new trailer because I got sick and tired of seeing that original trailer for last year. They got a big cast. They got a great. I mean, Jeff Bridges is in it. Haley Berry, a whole bunch of people. There's a U.S. version of the Kingsman that's going to be in it, yep. which you know, called a Statesman. I just think it's going to be another mindless, just fun movie. I was sick of the first trailer too, and a lot of the things you talked about, like the U.S. version of the Kingsman. I didn't realize any of that from the first trailer. Yeah, yeah, there's explosions. I, I understand. Like, They're oh, throwing geez. guns. Yes, it blows there's up. A guy okay, with a robot it. arm. Yeah. Got it. Moving on. Right. <laughs> oh, big explosion. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. And when does that come out, Mo? Uh, it comes out in about a week, I think. Or actually, a week and a half. So it should be before our next episode. Okay. Yep. So about a week by the time we publish this. Got All right. It. So everybody's talking about different TV shows and movies that they're looking forward okay. to. Okay. I'm actually looking forward to a new video game that's coming out. All right. Out. Always good. Which one? Your My Little Pony thing finally coming out? No. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> His My Little Pony game. Oh, yeah. That's what he's been His talking about. My Little Pony MMORPG. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. You've heard of Marvel versus Capcom. The, the fighting game, five right? Five other yes. in the series. So is this yeah. a fighting mm-hmm. game too? This is the same. It's the sixth one. Oh, okay. So, uh, all right. I'm in now. 
Yeah, it's a fighting okay. game, right? Yeah, it's a fighting game. Um, they're mostly everybody loves this series for the tag team battles because you know it's usually three versus three, so you get a lot more character interaction and everything during uh -huh. the game. It's not just pick one guy and pick another guy and fight. Yes. So this one, however, they're doing away with the three versus three and they're going to two versus two. So infinite is slightly less. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure how it's going to play as far, but and I didn't play any of the first five. I should say that right at the beginning. I'm looking forward to this because recently I started getting back into comic books oh, gotcha. and this has got comic books in it. So I said, well, I'm going to pick a, a fighting game that maybe I can learn before John does. And so maybe I okay. can beat him. Let in me say something. I would pay on money. A GXG I would pay good money to see a, you know, a YouTube video of you kicking John's ass in a fighting game. And I just pre-ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <sh> Damn it. <laughs> Where's Ro? Why can't Ro stop you from buying stuff? <laughs> That's why I shut the door when I podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right. So, well, since you pre-ordered it, it's coming out on the 19th. It's going to have single multiplayer mode. It's going to come out for Windows, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, Xbox One. All right. I see a plays episode in this. Yeah, I think so. This looks fun. George, I tell you what. I As much as I am not into these fighting games, I'm going to get this one. And I'm going to pick a character, and I'm going to work really hard. <laughs> and we, between the two of us, one of us has got to be able to beat John. Well, it is tag team, so maybe the two of us can tag team go. against John. Maybe. Maybe if you, you know. maybe if your forces combine, you can muster the power. <laughs> uh. So I'm going to get it, and we'll all start practicing when it comes out. Anyway, right. that's what I'm looking forward to. In cool. All right, wow. Games. You know, when I saw this on the list, I'm like, what is this? I never heard of it, and now I've pre-ordered it. So thanks a lot, George. <laughs> when you buy a Happy Meal at McDonald's, it always comes in an exciting special box. Wow! All right, and that's our show. We talked about an awful lot of stuff mm -hmm. in this episode, so we're going to place links down in our show notes down below so you guys can go and click on them and discover all the wonderful things we talked about, find out how you might want to launder your money to hide from your significant other. We'll have a special episode about that. And jump on the Gen X Grown Up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if you enjoy this, you know, be sure to subscribe to us on however you listen to your podcasts do stitcher or tune in or even itunes that's right yeah speaking of itunes listen it really helps us out if you would stop by the itunes app uh, on your pc open that up and give us a quick review the more reviews that we have it helps other people find our show and yeah. in case you missed it at the beginning of the show we actually got some Woo email Woo <laughs> this week we got some listener email from our All one right. Thank you. listener and so if you guys want to submit your questions to us drop us a line via podcast at genxgrownup.com hey and don't forget to visit us on youtube or on our site at genxgrownup.com guys as always it's been fun stay safe in the hurricane yeah you too man and we will have a backtrack next week and in two weeks our show again We'll see you all then. Bye, everybody. See you guys later. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No games, no puns. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Hello out there. Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together, we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!